up and share with you some word. Today is Friday. It's Friday evening and I wanted to come up here and share some things with you real fast um, because so much is happening in the world today and let us remember to not only just pray for Ukraine but let's pray for all of our leaders around the world because it's a lot of people everywhere that's just simply dying senselessly. But the question that my wife and I always asked, is people really ready when they depart this earth? Are you ready? There's a scripture that says, be ye also ready for the time you think not. So let's pray real fast and then we're going to go right into the word. Now, Father, let this word go forth unhindered and unchecked by any demonic force. Let this word go forth and accomplish why you sent it to go, where you sent it to go, and accomplish exactly what you want it to accomplish, and that it will never, ever return void. And we thank you for that. In Yahshua's name, we pray. Now, <clears throat> today, we just briefly want to come to you. That's my intent, always, to just make these brief. But sometimes the Holy Spirit will just take it and go the way he wants to go, which is perfectly fine with me because I'm just a vessel used by the Most High, like you and I are called to be. Do me a favor. Get your Bibles and um, or your iPhones or iPads or whatever you have and open your scripture to Ephesians chapter 6. Open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. And those of you that's new to the Word of God, go to the front of your book, the front of the Bible. Look for New Testaments. Look for the word Ephesians. How do you spell that, you said? E-P-H-E-S-I-A-N-S. -E -E Ephesians. Look for Ephesians. Look to see what page number it is in your Bible, because my page number is going to be different than mine. Turn to that page and then go to chapter number six and we're, we're going to start at verse number 10. Verse number 10. <clears throat> so while you're looking for that, I'm going to go ahead and take a little of this water that I have. That is some really good ice water. And I have my little notes here so I can take some notes. <clears throat> and I'm going to be reading from the King James Version as well as the Amplified. And as you know, which is our custom at Kingdom Truths Global Ministries, is to always read from the King James and then read a different translation so that you can get the perception of what King James is saying. We want to make sure you get the point. Now, just stop to think. The, the Bible, the King James Version, was translated by King James' people years and years and years ago. And they spoke the language then that they spoke. Today, we speak English and we don't have the same dialect. And so one of the things that we want to make sure that we do is we want you to understand, most of all, and the scripture says, in all you're getting, get understanding. You need to understand what you're doing. Now, why is that so important? If you were in a plane and the pilot got sick and couldn't fly that plane, you might want to have some understanding of how to fly that plane and land it safely. Because understanding is essential. Following detailed instructions will save your life. And this, what we're talking about, is more important than anything that's happening in this world. Alrighty? Let's pick it up at verse 10. And I'm going to start reading from the King James Version. And then I am going to read from the Amplified. I have my iPad as usual, I mean, you all know I do, except when I was out there in the middle of the field the other day, 
and I couldn't get reception for some strange reason. My iPad didn't pick up and connect to my iPhone. So I had to just read that one scripture. And I told you guys, you know, just go ahead and read whatever translation you wanted to read yourself. But let's go ahead and get this done. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Not yours, his. You know, let me share something with you. There's a scripture in Matthew 6.33, I think it is. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness. There, there's another scripture that I forget where exactly where it's located at. But it speaks about our righteousness is just like filthy rags. You ever change the oil in the car and see how black that oil is? And then you take that oily rag that's all black and drop it on the ground in some sand or dirt. How long do you think it's going to take you to get that white rag that's full of black, dirty, ugly, nasty grease, oil, that dropped in some dirt and sand to come nice and clean and white again. Think about that. Our righteousness is like filthy rags. This is why the Lord said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and who? His righteousness. And then what happened? All these things, the things that you and I have need of, will be added unto us. And that's the reason why it's imperative that you and I study the word, know the word, and put the word of God first. Now, this little boy that's trying to climb in my lap, you guys are well aware of who this is. This is Bruno. And he is always trying to get in my lap and find some attention. Little Bruno, go get on your bed. So go stay. I'm not going to put you up here right now. And I'm going to stay focused on this word. Okay, go get on your bed. You're a good boy. Okay, so let's go back and read... Um, Verse 10, verse 10, so finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And um, verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I know you guys are saying, what in the world is W-I-L-E-S, wiles of the devil? And that's, that's the reason why we do, the very exact reason why we do these different translations. So you can get the gist of the scripture, the definition of different words. And I know you can look them up yourself because that's the, what's what you want to do. You want to study the word. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells you to study that shows yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. And this is the one of the things that you want to do. And, um, and so you and I need to be putting on the entire armor of God every day and wear it. Don't even take it off. All right. So and let's go back to Levit again. This is put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days, and having done all to stand. 14. Stand therefore, and having your loins girded about with truth, and having and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 16. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 18. Praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. 
19. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. Utterance. Praying in the spirit that utter it. There are some churches that don't believe in that. We do. Let's move on. 20. For which I am an ambassador in bonds. Now here is my brother that said he is an ambassador of the kingdom of God. But because of his dedication to the things of God, this word, this gospel, this unadulterated word of the Most High God. He was locked up for it. That's right. Locked up for it. But look what he says here in this verse. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know my affairs and how to do. And he says, Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister of the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent to you for the same purpose that you might know our affairs and that you might comfort your heart. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Now, <clears throat> I read those few verses. Now I'm going to read those same few verses in the Amplified so you can get a gist of what it was saying. That water is good. Verse 10. Amplified. You remember what chapter we're in? We're in chapter 6. We're going to verse 10. We're in the book of Ephesians. And I'm going to pick it up at the Amplified. In conclusions, be strong in the Lord and draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. How are you empowered? Are you going on your own strength? your own righteousness, what you think in your mind is fair and just. There are so many people that do so many different things. They take so many different actions because they think in their mind that this, this is the right. Well, you know, we have people today that want to be the judge, the jury, and the executioner. Somebody do something to them, they think they have a right to go bust out windshields, tear up cars, flatten tires, shoot people, murder people. They just think I have a right to do it because you did something to me. You sit on my head. And because you sit on my head, I'm going to retaliate. That's, re come on, that's their righteousness, like filthy rags. That's just being motivated by Satan. Just like the scripture was talking about here. Satan enter in and have people doing all kind of weird stuff. Demonic stuff. So let's just go back and read what this thing said. Because your strength comes from being in a relationship with the Most High every day. You know, we heard years ago. You got to fast to last. You got to pray to stay. You can't take it. You won't make it. If you can't take it, you won't make it. So get in the word, study this word, know the Lord. Let me ask you a question. Do you really know the voice of God? When the Lord said, be still and know, have you taken the time to really know? Or will the Lord say to you, when you face the Lord in that day of judgment, will he say, I never knew you, depart from me? Or are you spending time right now 
diligently seeking the Lord so that you will know without a shadow of doubt you and the Father God have a relationship. I mean, there's an earning. There's a there's you every day you need to just be in the word. Every day you want to share this word. Every day you want to, your light shines. You, you see people. You want to tell them about the goodness of God. You meet them in the post office. You meet them in the grocery store. You meet them walking down the street. You want to share the word of God with people. You cannot put this light under a bushel. You can't hide this light under a bed. And if you're around somebody that wants you to shut up when you speak the word of God, you're around the wrong person. Pray for that person. Pray for them to get them healed, delivered, and set free. Pray for them. But don't let them put your light out. No, don't do that. Mm -mm. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Pray. My Lord, pray. Okay, look at this right here. Verse 10. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord and draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might. The Lord has boundless might. Boundless. 11. Put on the full armor of God for his precepts are like the splendor armor of of a heavily armed soldier so that you may be able to successfully stand up against the schemes, all of them, all these schemes and all the strategies and the deceit of the devil. Because Satan got a trap set for you. He's got some schemes set for you. And the Lord know what they are. You may not know because they're spiritual. You can walk right into a trap. It's just like a cobweb. Sometimes you'll walk into a cobweb and don't even see it. That's a trap. Suppose it was a real strong cobweb and you couldn't get out of it. But the Lord will said, I'll show you things to come. The Lord will say, uh-uh, no, don't go that way. It's a trap set for you. Go this way. But if you're not paying attention to what the Lord is telling you because you're so focused on world events... And what's going on in the world and what's going on in your pockets. And so many people so focused on their money. Thank the Lord, my wife and I do not have money first in our life. No, God is first in our life. Thank the Lord for that. God is first in our life. All right, look. Get on your bed, little boy. Number 11. Let's read that again. Put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendor armor of a heavily armed soldier. So that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. And he got a bucket load full. He's been practicing ever since he walked walked into the Garden of Eden and was lying to Eve and and Adam. Just lying. But he lied and deceived them that he tricked them, bamboozled them, and he took control of the world. Time started. Evil showed up. It was just... The, it's, it was the beginning of the fall of man. Terrible times. All right. And we still deal with that. But guess what? The second Adam came, who is Christ himself, Yeshua. And here we are, redeemed back to the Father. Isn't that wonderful? Just redeemed back to the Father. Verse 12. For our struggles is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. 13. Therefore, put on the complete 
armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil days of danger and having done everything that the crisis demand to stand firm in your place fully prepared, immovable, victoriously. The only way you're going to be able to do that, we'll wait for the clock. The only way that you're going to be able to fight against that foul spirit is not with your flesh and blood. It has nothing to do with what you think that you can mentally ascend to or that you have a physical strength to battle or that you have a real powerful punch. No. No. You got to fight that demon with the spirit of God and the word of God. You need to have on the whole armor of God like the word of God is telling us. And when you're dressed up in this armor, Satan doesn't see you. He see Christ and run and run. <laughs> he best run. Christ already defeated him once. And each and every day we speak the word he's defeated again and again and again and again. Don't let that spirit defeat you. 14. So stand firm. And hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, an upright heart. That's why we pray, Lord, create in me a clean heart, an upright heart. And having strapped on, look at this. Your feet, the gospel of peace and preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability and the readiness produced by good news. My brothers and sisters, this that I'm telling you is some good news. Mm, mm, mm. 16. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And having taken the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. 18. With all prayers and petitions. Look at that. With all prayer and petition prayer with specific request. My brothers and sisters, have you taken the time to just simply get yourself, even if you have to get a composition book, a notebook, get a little piece of pad, something, you write, write down the petitions that you, that you need to be talking to the Lord about. Your marriage, your family, your children, your job, your business, the neighbors, your spiritual walk with the Lord. Your relationship with the Lord. I mean, why, why would we... You know what? Let me ask you this question. And, and be honest with yourself. Do you really know if you die today that you're going right straight to heaven? Or is your answer say, I hope so? Or do you answer, I don't know? Well, why are you breathing? You best be finding out. Because if you don't know the Lord and you leave here, then you might hear the Lord says, I never knew you. I mean, even if you are a spiritual carnal babe in the Lord, at least you have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. That's a little babe. That's a little tiny baby and little infant. Infant. You cannot stay at an infant state. You have to grow. The scripture said, when I was a child, I act like a child. When I became a man, I put away the childish things. Nothing, let nothing separate you from the love of God. Nothing. And y'all can think 
We all been there. If you look at these videos, you'll see every last one of us is guilty. We have put so many different things before the Lord. All of us. All of us. But it comes a time when you grow up and stop the foolishness. My Lord. Your soul is at stake. Your soul is in a balance. Whew, my God. Help us, Lord. And help your people. Let's, let's look at 18 again. With all prayer and petitions prayer, with specific request at all times, on every occasion and in every season, in the spirit, and with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petitions, interceding in prayer for all God's people. All of God's people. I mean, every last one of our brothers and sisters that accepted Jesus Christ as Lord, we need to pray for them as well as the unsaved. But for sure, all of God's people. Let's look at the word, 19. And pray for me. Here's Paul. Paul speaking and said, pray for me. How long has Paul already been caught up in the things of God? He's already gone. He's already on its other side. And we still reading his words where he's saying, pray for me. It's just like these videos that we're making. I will have already left earth. And if YouTube is still around, a lot of you people will be hearing this word right here. And I pray that you accept Yeshua as Lord, Lord of your life. And then read this gospel. You know, there is people that says, um, I've heard somebody say, you guys are teaching a different doctrine. How's that? When this is the same doctrine, the gospel of Christ. Christ is the only one that came to earth and his father said, Yahweh, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. John the Baptist spoke about it, said there is a Christ whose shoes I'm not even able to tie up. When Christ was baptized, came up out of that. He was baptized by John the Baptist and then the Holy Spirit descended on him, set right on him like a dove. Surely after that, he went up into the wilderness to be tempted by who? That's right, the devil. And the devil was trying to quote scriptures then. And the Lord said, get behind me, Satan. I only serve the God. I only serve my father. But my brothers and sisters, that's the way we have to be. We're not, we're, let me share something else with you. We're not a slave to nothing and no one. When the Lord has made us free, we are free indeed. If you're a slave, you're a slave in your own mind. You're in prison in your own mind. That's why it says in the book of Psalms, verse 1, chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You know what? Go ahead and read that. Because if you're not born again and you're not studying this word, you're taking instructions from yourself and you're the one that's ungodly. Read the word. Get your soul straight with the Lord. It's imperative. Let's keep reading. 19. And pray for me, Paul said. And I'm saying, Brother Gilliam is telling you, pray for me. Pray for my wife. Pray for my family. I'm telling you, I'm praying for you all. I am praying constantly for the whole family, the bloodline, the spiritual, all of our children, all of our family. We're praying constantly for the military that's doing what they're doing, the presidents, the cabinets, the elected officials, people that are abroad. We're praying for Putin. Save him, Lord. Save him. Whew. Some people get so bad, they wind up with a reprobated mind. <sighs> Verse 19. 
the third time I'm reading it. And pray for me that words may be given to me when I open my mouth to proclaim boldly the mysteries of the good news of salvation. This is the, this is the doctrine. This is the gospel I'm talking about. This one. This one ain't different. This is the same gospel that our Lord said, go teach and preach. This is the same gospel and doctrine that Paul, Matthew, Luke, John, John the Baptist, all of these disciples have been speaking about. This isn't changed. This is the same one. Proclaim boldly mysteries of the good news of salvation. For I am an ambassador in chains. Now, why is Paul in chains? Why is this ambassador from the kingdom of God in chains? Because the world didn't want him to speak this gospel. And they tossed him in prison for it. But if you read the word, you'll find out that the Holy Spirit showed up too. And broke. I mean, it was a shaking going on. Woo! I'm telling you, boy, there was a shaking going on. But you got to believe the word and get it dropped in your spirit. You got to get a hunger and a thirst for this word. You personally need to have a hunger and a thirst for the word of God. And know, the Lord said, if you diligently seek me, You'll find me. You knock and the door will be open. Call on the Lord. I'm telling you, call on him. Verse 20. For I am an ambassador in chains. And I pray that in proclaiming it, I may speak boldly and courageously as I should. You know what, Lord? Be that unto me as well and be that same prayer unto Paul. Unto my wife Gloria. Be that unto us. All the men and women. That seek the face of God. That has a heart for souls. Lord God. Let us all speak. Boldly and courageously. As we should. Verse 21. Now. <laughs> so that you may know how I am. And what I'm doing. The beloved brother and faithful minister of the Lord. Tachikas. <laughs> will tell you everything. And that Paul went on to sit there and said, listen, this brother, this other evangelist is out here with us all. He's going to share with you, brothers some sisters, of what's going on. Well, guess what? Now was Brother Gilliam telling you all that word. We're disciples of the Most High God, and we want you to know this word. This word. 22. I have sent him to you for this very purpose so that you may know we how we are and that you may comfort and encourage and strengthen your hearts. Look what he said here. 23. Peace be to the brothers and the sisters and love joined with faith from God the Father and the Lord Christ, the Lord Yeshua Christ, of course, King James says Jesus Christ, but y'all know I like to use his name, Yahshua. 24, grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with undying and incorruptible love. Yes, I love the Lord and I love you too. And I love you enough to tell you and invite you to come to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, you know what? Let's flip over here to Romans because some of you all don't know really how to accept Jesus Christ as Lord. So, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you again. We're going to go over here to Romans 10. If you go over to Romans Romans chapter 10, and you go right on down to, let's start reading right here at verse 8. See my Bible right there? I have it highlighted in yellow. See that yellow that shows up on the screen right there? 
This Bible has been highlighted, and I have another Bible that's my study Bible that I've had for years and years and years. But look, I'm going to lean this on the pages so y'all can see it. I'm going to push back. I'm going to push back my iPad, and I am going to turn this right here so you can see the pages. See that right there? Can you see that word? Look what it says. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy, what? Heart. And that is the word of faith which we preach. Look what number nine says. That if we shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart, that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between who? The Jews and the Greeks. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall what? Shall be saved. How powerful is that, my brothers and sisters? I just turned this whole phone right to that page to let you see it. Now, you know what? Please. Accept Jesus Christ as Lord. Make him Lord of your life. So that you and I can walk heaven together. Let's pray. Now, Father, thank you for this word that has went forth tonight. Thank you for this word that is going all around the world. Thank you, Lord, that thousands and thousands and thousands of people will view this word. And thousands, Father God, will give their heart and their soul over to you. And Lord, they will learn of you. We will learn of you, Father God, every day. Even the more. Even the more, Lord. Even the more is our prayer. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. And thank God. My brothers and sisters, I always count on a privilege and a joy to have this platform and this opportunity to come to you and share the word of God with you. It's just wonderful to me. And um, it's wonderful to my family. If this word has helped you, or if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Ask questions. We're here to help you. We'll give you exactly, if we can answer it, because all of our answers are going to come out of the Word. If we can help you, my light just turned off. If we can help you, that's why you see this thing just change like it did. I just turned it back on so I can get it bright again. If we can help you, we certainly will. And um, it keeps going out. I have to charge my battery up. See how it just stays on for a second and then go bad? That's because that needs to be charged up again. I don't know how long that little battery lasts. Maybe sometime it lasts longer than 30 minutes. But I don't know what's wrong with it this time. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, if we can help you, please um, leave a comment. And we'll go to the scriptures, find an answer for you. And, uh, and then we'll comment, reply back to you with what the scripture says. We'll give you a scripture and says, here is... Um, the translation of that from this version, from this version, that version, and then you all can read it for yourselves and get some revelation knowledge on it. That's why it's important that you and I pray in the spirit and we allow the utterance to come forth to edify ourselves and edify the church. Alrighty, so with that said, um, as usual, we've already prayed. Y'all be blessed and peace be unto you. We'll see you soon the Lord willing.